Okay, we're back. So what I've done here is I've got the radio set up. It's just the radio. Off to the side here, I've got a extent, uh, death leads, and basically this is a line cord that plugs in the wall with uh, a pair of leads out here in the open. Over on the other side here, I've got a light bulb over here, just in a socket, and it's it's basically two leads come out to some banana plugs. This is a kind of a test fixture I use for some stuff downstairs. Um, and it does a few other things. I, in my shop, I try not to build anything too specific unless there's a real need for it. So basically the rule of thumb is there are no unitaskers. They take up too much room and they get used very seldom. Uh, really the only unitasker I've got in the fire, uh, downstairs in the uh, shop is a fire extinguisher. So we'll just plug these two together real quick here and show you that this light lights. There you go. Okay. So let's say we know that for a fact that this is a hot chassis radio. And let's say I'm uh, uninformed. What well, a little piece of info here is this lead is actually grounded to a water pipe in the house. Okay. So, when you hook this radio up, you can hook it up one of two ways, right or left. And I'm just going to hook it up here. There's a tiny little spark because the radio is turned on. And the radio will come on. Now, over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lead this lead and hook it to one side of the light bulb. Now if this chassis is hot, when I touch this lead, the current will go from the wall, through the chassis, through the lead, out the other lead, through this lead here to ground, and a bulb will light up. So we'll see here. Oop, and there's a weird buzzing noise too. So that chassis is technically hot right now. And to prove it, I'll just uh, move the camera up a little bit so you can see. We'll just unplug the radio and flip the leads over. I've exchanged them 180 degrees. Now the chassis isn't hot. It's still playing. I'm going to get nasty grams from YouTube, but I think they might forgive me for safety demonstrations. So here you can see when I touch it, it doesn't light up. And when I So we'll go ahead and bring this over here, and there you can see it light up. Okay. Well, that's a pretty dangerous situation if you get the cord plugged in wrong. Now, you could test it every time and make sure it's right. Well, you know how those make sure it's right things are. They don't work so well in the real world. So, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll beat that. And I have to excuse this, but this is just a few adapters, and that's all there is to it. This is what's called an isolation transformer, and basically this is a one-to-one -one transformer. That means the number of turns on this side, the input, equal the number of turns on the output. So in the transformer world, whatever you put in comes out equally. Of course, there's some loss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the test fixture the death cord into the isolation transformer. And I'm going to set the isolation transformer over here on the, on the out of the way. So now I'm going to hook it back up any way I want. I just hooked it up. I can't remember, so I don't know which way do we hook that up. Okay. So let me make a connection down here. So now I'm plugging the isolation transformer in the wall. And there we go. 
so the radio should come on. You should see it. Should have saw this tube light up, maybe. Yep. And the radio is coming back on. Now remember, I didn't pay a lot of attention to which way this is. So if the isolation transformer does its job, No, uh, there will be no path for any current to go to ground. So let's hook the bulb up. And that would be true even if you don't have the radio in circuit, there's no path. We should be seeing the light light. But if we unhook the ground and hook it up, the light will light up. Does that make sense? And just to be sure, we had black over here, so we will exchange these two and oh, there's one of the reasons not to use the death leads but that's okay what you don't see is I've got another circuit here in line and uh, it's got a very tiny fuse so if something like that happens it'll blow the fuse so I'm gonna hook the ground back up to the light bulb here and nothing happens. So let's just exchange them one more time. Nothing happens. So there, you've basically defeated the, uh, the path to ground. Now that doesn't mean you still can't get a shock, it just means you won't get a shock through the chassis. A, a way to have this happen would be if you hook this all up without the isolation transformer and I don't know, say you use your solder iron, say your solder iron is grounded, you go to solder something on the chassis, well there's a circuit, well guess what's going to get it, take a big hit. Hopefully just the solder iron tip and not you. So this could be a safety issue. This is a safety issue on a lot of these old, what they call AA, uh, A5 radios or older TVs, T uh, a lot of TVs actually. A way this is defeated in the consumer world is they're usually covered by plastic. Like this radio would normally would be pretty much unexposed except for this screw right here that would poke out the back. That would be potentially hot. And one way you can minimize that nowadays is using a um, polarized line cord. And when you hook that back up down here, you would make the chassis, the, the neutral, or the white wire. It would minimize that. Um, these things are to be, they don't have to fear them, but you do have to respect them. It can be pretty interesting pretty quickly mostly because it's unexpected. You don't expect to grab the radio. And here's a perfect example of how someone would get hurt. Say you've got this and you're running it and the chassis is hot. For some dumb reason, say the knob breaks off and you know it could go months having a broken knob and you don't notice anything but one day you happen to lean on the kitchen sink or something that's grounded and then reach over and turn the radio on. Well guess what? If it's hooked up wrong you're gonna get knocked on your can. You might get a hell of a shock. And it might be a hell of a surprise. Guitar amps are, older guitar amps were kind of notorious for this. I believe there's been at least one or two people killed on stage from this uh, potential same rigmarole. So it's something to be aware of, especially when you're working on these. Um, you really ought to use an isolation transformer. Isolation transformers are rated in uh, watts, so you want to have one appropriate to the device you're tinkering with or going to tinker with. So if you're going to fool with a big TV, you know, that might be a three or 400 watt television. You might want a 600 watt isolation transformer. I've got a, a huge one downstairs. My isolation transformer I use on the bench is a couple thousand watts just because uh, I went through a few of them and every time I got one, well this will be big enough, well guess what, a month later I was working on something bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's what a hot chassis is. And it's uh, all its glory. So hopefully you found this useful and hopefully it will keep you from getting knocked on your keister. 
um, a good practice is to, even though you're using the isolation transformers, to always kind of check that stuff. You never know what might go on. You know, somebody might have been in there messing around. You know, don't make any assumptions. Um, if you don't, then you won't get knocked on your butt. I remember working on a guitar amp one time. I believe it was a PV. I think this is just I just because I can't remember. And it had four uh, 6550 output tubes. And for some weird reason, those tubes that were in there, the plate voltage was on the metal shell of the tube floating above the chassis. And I didn't obey one of my rules, and I reached in there and was going to do something. I reached over to grab that tube or brushed up against it, and geez, a wheeze. I think I flew into next week. There was about 600 volts on there. That's one of my more memorable uh, shocks <laughs> in life. <laughs> Work on electronics and claim you've never gotten shocked. There's only a few things that happen here. You're a big damn liar. You never really worked on anything. Or you, you've probably worked on extremely low voltage stuff like uh, maybe 3 volts, but uh, that's how you can get hurt, um, especially if you aren't expecting it. So there you go. There's uh, what a hot chassis is, how to maybe make it a little bit safer. Probably the best way to make it safe is uh, use your brain and your voltmeter. You know, always check it. Check it for AC and DC. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. If you have any horror stories about getting knocked on your can, feel free to post them. I'm not embarrassed about mine. I learned a painful lesson. Literally, I, it knocked me off the... Uh, I had a a bench with a... I had a stool. I went flying onto the floor. Uh, the shock didn't hurt half as much as the fall to the floor. So I learned a painful lesson there. Anyway, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, feel free. If you have other videos, feel free to peruse them in my channel. If you go to my channel, you can thumb through them. Uh, I have a mechanical and electromechanical and uh, electronic and electrical and other interesting little tidbits. Tips and tricks of the trades. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.